Hey, so in section 2.8, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the derivative as a function. So in section 2.7, previously what we had done is looked at the derivative at a certain point. What we want to do is that we want to keep it general so that we can find the derivative of multiple points. So for example, if you're driving a car for four hours, instead of looking at just what your speed was at hour two, we could find a function and we could find your speed at any given time because your speed might change while you're driving. So the derivative function is typically defined using that Henry definition from the last section, which is the limit as h approaches 0. But instead of having f prime of a, we're going to have f prime of x. So we're going to keep it as a function, keep that point general. So for example, let's find the general derivative of f of x equals x cubed. And we want to use that to find the derivative at the point x equals 0, 1 half, and 1. So Using this definition above, we are going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of, so x plus h to the third minus x to the third divided by h. We're going to go ahead and expand that top part out. So that's going to give me x to the third plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed minus x cubed all over h. Now, like we've done in the past, what we're going to do is we're going to look at things that cancel. So that guy cancels with that. The other thing I notice is that all of these terms have an h in common. So I can factor out an h. So what that will give me when I factor that h out is the limit as h approaches 0 of h times 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared divided by h. Now that h on the top and the bottom are going to cancel. And remember, we're looking as h goes to 0. So as h goes to 0, what's going to happen is that anything that has an h multiplied by it is going to be gone. So 3x times 0 and h squared, that would be 0 squared, are going to go away. So our derivative function is just 3x squared. Now, if our derivative function f prime of x equals 3x squared, and if I want to find the derivative at the point 0, 1 half, and 1, all I have to do is take those values and plug them in for x. So the second part of the question would be f prime of 0 would equal 3 times 0 squared, which would give us 0. f prime of 1 half, which would be 3 times 1 half squared, which would give us 3 fourths. And lastly, f prime of 1 3 times 1 squared, which would give us 3. Okay, great. <clears throat> All right, so for the next example, let's go ahead and change this. Let's just find the derivative of 1 over t. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over t plus h minus 1 over t all divided by h. Now remember, if we're going to subtract these two, we have to find a common denominator. So we're going to multiply the right-hand side by the denominator of the left, and vice versa, the left by the denominator on the right. All right, so once we do that, what we're going to get is the limit as h approaches 0 of t minus t plus h all over t times t plus h. And remember, dividing by h is the same as multiplying by 1 over h, so let's just go ahead and do that. Now, on this top part, what we need to do is we need to take that negative and we need to distribute it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those parentheses, and I'm going to distribute that negative. And now we're going to have some really nice cancellation. So the cancellation that we're going to see is that these t's are going to cancel out, and then Across this division, okay, that negative h and that h will cancel out. So 
So what we will be left with is the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 divided by t times t plus h. Now we can't really simplify it any further, so let's go ahead and plug 0 in for my h. And what I'm going to get is negative 1 divided by t times t plus h. So my derivative will be negative 1 divided by t squared. So you can see where those law or the um, limit rules from earlier really help us out. All right, now for the next one, what we want to do is that we want to graph the derivative given the function. So if we have x cubed, well, from the previous example, what we know is we know that the derivative is going to be 3x squared. So we know that our derivative is going to look like a parabola. Okay, but how would we know that if we didn't want to find the derivative algebraically? What if we just wanted to look at the graph and find it that way? Well, here's how. Let's say I picked a point, and I pick the point negative 1, and I draw the tangent line. Now, what's the slope here at negative 1? The slope looks like it's going to be a positive number, and it looks like it's kind of steep. So, I think that the slope would be somewhere around 3. So at negative 1, the slope would be some point all the way up here. Now, if I go over here and I draw that tangent line, I still have a positive slope, but it's going to be less. So the slope is going to start to go down. If I look at the tangent line here at 0, it's a horizontal line. So at 0, the slope is going to be 0. And likewise, as I continue to look at the tangent line, it's getting steeper and steeper, which means at every x point, my slope is increasing. And that is how I would get this parabolic shape. Now, for the next one, if I wanted to draw the derivative, so g prime of x, here's what I could do, is looking at either side of this function, here's what I see. On this side, do this in a different color. Let's go ahead and do it in red. On this side, the slope is the negative 1. And on this side, the slope is positive 1. So no matter what x value I look at on this left-hand side, so at negative 1, my slope would be negative 1. At negative 0.5, my slope would still be negative 1. And that would continue all the way up until I hit 0. Then, if I look on this right-hand side, so let's say I look at x equals 0 0.5, what's my slope? My slope would be 1. What's my slope at 1? Well, it would still be 1. And the slope is going to be 1 for all of these x values. So that would be the picture of the derivative. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw <clears throat> just another example for us to do, just for fun. All right, so let's say that on some graph, we are given a function that looks like this. So let's say their function looks like this guy, okay? And let's call this g of x. Now let's say that we want to draw the derivative, okay, so we want to draw g prime of x. So here's how this is going to work, is the x-axis is going to be our x values, and our y-axis is going to be the values of the derivative, so it's going to be the slope at that point. Now whenever I'm drawing a derivative, here are a couple of things that I like to point out first. Where is my derivative equal to zero? Well. I'm going to have a tangent line with a slope of 0 here and here. So if I were to draw the derivative, it would lie right there. So at that point, the slope would be 0 and the slope would be 0 here. Now, to the left of this first 0 slope, if I were to draw a tangent line, my slope is, is it positive or negative? 
Well, it's going to have a negative y value. So it's going to start from down here and go up. Now, if I go on the other side, is my slope positive or negative? Well, it's positive, so that means that my value is going to continue to go up on the positive side. Now, it's going to slowly decrease until I hit zero, right? So you guys see how it's going to start to go down the closer I get to that zero. After that point, my slope becomes negative again. So if we were to draw this out, we have a negative slope, which means my derivative will have a negative y value. After that, I have a positive slope, which means my derivative will have a positive y value. And back again, I have a negative slope, which means my derivative will have a negative y value. All right, let's look at this next example. Boop, boop, boop. <clears throat> so we're going to use the graph below, and we want to draw a graph of h prime of x. So we're going to split this up into three different pieces. Okay, We're going to split it up into this piece. Then we're going to look at this piece. And then we're going to look at this piece. The reason why is because they are different functions, so they're going to have vastly different um, slopes. So between negative 1 and 0, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a slope that goes down 3 and over 1. So I'm going to have a slope of negative 3. And because it's a straight line, it's going to be a constant slope. So no matter what point you choose on here, the slope is always going to be negative 3. Now, if I look at this <clears throat> 1 half x squared, okay, if I found the derivative using the limit definition, then what you're going to find is that y prime is going to equal just plain old x. So, my slope is going to change as I move up this function, okay? So it's not going to be constant, it's not going to always be negative 3 like the first one. It's going to change, so it's going to change from something around 0 to something around 2. Now for the last one, the blue one, if we look from 2 to 4, again we have a straight line, so we're going to have a constant slope. So let's see, I'm going to go down 2 and over 2, so that means I'm going to have a slope of negative 1. Good. Now, notice that I left all of these open. The reason I left them open at all of these endpoints is because, remember, we can't have a slope there because the slope is defined as a limit, so the slope has to be the same coming from one side as the other, and we have too quick of an adjustment. All right. For the next one, we want to state the intervals and the points for which our derivative is positive, negative, or zero. So if we take a look at this, when is our derivative positive? Well, first I'm going to draw. So in blue, my derivative is negative and negative because it's going down. Then in red, I'm going to have a positive slope because it's going to be going up and up. So the intervals for which it's positive are going to be between x equals negative 3, 2, and then 5, and it looks like it goes to infinity. My derivative is going to be negative from negative infinity to negative 3 because I have a negative slope, and from 2 to 5. Remember, when you're writing interval notation, you're only including the x values. So you're saying as x goes between negative 3 to positive 2, and when x goes from 5 to infinity. Now my derivative will equal 0 here and here, because remember, horizontal lines have a slope of 0. So this is going to occur when x equals negative 3 and 2. 
So a function f of x is differentiable, not continuous, on an interval if the function is both smooth and continuous. Okay, so the reason this is true is, I've been alluding to this the whole time, is that the derivative is a limit. So what we have to have, if it's smooth and continuous, then what's going to happen is that as I reach a point, the slope coming from one side is going to gradually be the same as the slope coming from the other side. However, if I have a quick turn, so something sharp, or I have a hole, here's what happens. My slope is going to be different whether I'm coming from the left side or the right side, which means that the derivative will fail to exist. Now at this point, even though it looks like the slope is approaching the same from the left or the right side, here's the reason that doesn't work, is that by definition of the limit, we're always going to have to plug that point in right here. Now if I have a blank spot, I can't plug that in, so I have a no-go. So if we look at this graph below, we want to state the x values for which the function is non-differentiable. That means we can't take the derivative there. So we are not going to be able to take the derivative at sharp points or where our function fails to be continuous. So it's going to be non-differentiable, non-diff, when x equals negative 4 and when x equals 0. We can find the slope anywhere else except for those two points because again, at x equals negative 4, we would have a different slope coming from the left or coming from the right. And at 0, we have a break in the graph. Okay, and we also don't know what value we should choose exactly for f of a. So even though it's filled in here, maybe the slope is different on this side. I don't know.